Windsor 9. The following is a live presentation of CBC Sports. It is just past 5 o'clock on the last Sunday afternoon in November. Temperature close to 5 Celsius outside Sky Dome on a gray afternoon heading towards evening. Inside, well, of course, it is climate controlled. Conditions are perfect. Will that be an advantage for the passing of Doug Flutie? Or will Winnipeg's huge offensive line simply roll over Calgary, opening big holes for Michael Richardson to roll on through? We are soon going to find out in what looks to be a classic confrontation. As we come to the south end of Sky Dome, you see the lights there, three lights on level number four. That is our countdown booth, our home for the next 60 minutes. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brian Williams. Welcome to CBC's coverage of Grey Cup 92. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Calgary Stampeders, with all this talk of expansion to, Tec to Texas and California, will this be the last truly all-Canadian Grey Cup? The Grey Cup is a Canadian institution with a long, rich, and proud tradition. First side of the field using West. A long lateral pass to West. West is away at the 20, the 25, the 30, 35, the 40, the 45, the 50. The largest crowd to ever see a great cup football game. Boys over there going along with the goal. He disappears in the fog on the far side, and I don't know where he's brought down. Well, here's the great cup presentation to Russ Jackson, the quarterback who ends it all in storybook style. Winning a great Look way. Flipping. 11 yard line. Lost the ball. No good. There was a bad hold on that. That wasn't entirely Don Sweet's fault. On the snapback. Gabriel is open in the end zone. Touchdown! 35 yard attempt for David Ridgway. It's up. It's good. If he gets to the outside this time, he's gone. The rocket delivers the quarterbacks have led their teams to Sky Dome with the league championship on the line and definite plans on how to get it. I hope I can have this success in this game that I've had throughout the year. Um, you know, you just you keep, take each play one play at a time and uh, whatever happens, happens. Uh, you try to execute, you try to do things by the book and try to make it work and then if it doesn't, you just become instinctive and, and react and be an athlete. I'm looking forward to the opportunity of competing against a great defense and, uh, and the Great Cup Classic. Uh, I'm concentrating on certain things and first downs and second downs and mediums and second downs and long situations. Keep the game broken up into fragments like that so I can take one play at a time and not think about uh, winning a football game or the outcome of a football game but rather than playing it. Last year, tears of pain, tears of joy for Dunnigan with the Argonauts. One week ago, wearing Winnipeg Blue Bombers colors, Matt assured his fifth breakup appearance. Winnipeg can run, evidenced by Michael Richardson's 200-plus yards against Hamilton. And their defense can physically back all the boasting. No one provides miracles like Doug Flutie. At his command, a fleet and nerveless receiving core ready to enter enemy territory. Plus that swirling defense, quick, powerful, intent on putting down any offensive threats. So with the CFL's named players in the spotlight, the Grey Cup is indeed up for grabs. Less than 90 minutes to kick off between the Calgary Stampeders and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers as we come into what is actually the baseball booth. We're at the south end when this stadium is set up for baseball. This is where the play-by-play -play booth is for the Blue Jays during the American League season. 
We will be dealing with many issues during the next 60 minutes. You know, every year we do this show, it seems like the Canadian Football League is at some kind of a crossroads. I think, uh, without question, it is at a crossroads here in 1992. We'll look at expansion. We'll look at the possibility of moving next year's game to Calgary. Right now, in fact, let's give you the menu for our countdown show this afternoon. We have our special countdown computer section inside the stats for a non-emotional prediction. Will expansion end this league? We'll take a look at the quarterbacks by those who know them best. We'll have fan participation, and we'll look at the key roles performed by kickers in the Canadian Football League. The man that has hosted the CFL on CBC during the regular seasons. He has spent uh, a lot of time on the sidelines of every stadium in this country, so it's appropriate right now. We find him in the end zone here at Sky Dome. Let's go down and say good afternoon to Scott Oak. Scott? Okay, Brian. Well, the road to the Grey Cup has taken us to Sky Dome without one of our colleagues, and I want to take a moment to talk about Dan Kepley. And today, the news is good. Kep has been upgraded from critical to good condition. Of course, he remains in a Calgary hospital, but he's won many battles in his life, and we know he is going to win this one. Is this not a game that Dan Kepley, one of the great middle linebackers in recent CFL history, would really love? That's because it will be a serious test for linebackers as they pursue Flutie and Dunnigan. How much do those players mean to their teams? Well, you only have to ask the Toronto Argonauts and the BC Lions. When Dunnigan left uh, Toronto to sign with Winnipeg, the Argos collapsed. Their coach was fired. When Flutie left the BC Lions to sign on with Calgary, uh, the Lions took a straight nosedive, and their head coach was eventually fired. So, yes, this is a matchup of two heavyweight quarterbacks. Brian begs a lot of questions, and from field level today, we'll try and answer as many as possible. All right, Scott, questions to be answered off the field. How many people are going to show up? It is not a sellout. We'll return live right after this. Guns Editions, take six. Ho, ho, ho. Thank you. It's Leon's Ho, Ho, Hold the Payment. Ho, 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 ho. Get the furniture you need for the holidays with no interest and no payment till June. Ho, ho, ho. Right. Leon's Ho Ho Hold the Payment. No matter how you say it, it's just a better way to buy furniture. Is this for the beer commercial? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. McCauley, stay in touch. McCauley. 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 You call, okay? No. I'll call, Mom. McCauley. Every day? savings plans. Stay close. Call us and find out how you can save. from earlier this afternoon, just about two hours ago. There's Doug Flutie, Calgary Stampeders, arriving here at Sky Dome, and they were followed by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers as they prepare for the 80th Grey Cup. And once again, down to the floor of the Sky Dome and Scott Oak. Scott? All right, Brian, can the Winnipeg defense contain uh, Doug Flutie? Can the Calgary defense shut down Michael Richardson? Most important of all, who's going to win this game? Those are the questions this Grey Cup matchup begs. Every self-respecting fan, of course, has the answers, but uh, it's awfully hard to find an honest broker, is it not? Well, we think we have. We went to Calgary, and please do not be fooled by the location because the Alberta Research Council is completely neutral. That's because the computer can know no bias whatsoever. The council's researchers have spent weeks entering no end of information, including every play the Stampeders and Bombers have run all season long. The plays include infinite detail so as to simulate a game as realistically as possible. Now, we can use terms like object-oriented simulation and case-based reasoning, but let us just say the computer has already played this Grey Cup game. We've been collecting the game statistics for every CFL game. This includes 10,000 offensive, defensive plays throughout the whole season. The computer knows in detail what everybody has done in the past season. So if the players play as if they had in the last season without changing things, then we should be able to make a pretty good prediction. 
So then the game is over, albeit only as far as the computer is concerned. It's been broken down now into three categories, passing, rushing, kicking, which add up to the final score. But we caution folks, the computer cannot factor a couple of things that often decide big games like this. That's emotion and pressure. This is only food for thought. Let's begin with rushing. CFL's top rusher during the season was Winnipeg's Michael Richardson. The computer says he's in for a big day. He'll carry the ball a fair amount, flirt with 200 yards, and score one touchdown. Matt Dunnigan is a mobile quarterback, but the computer suggests he won't gain a lot of yards today. Doug Flutie is the heart of the Calgary running game, and the computer, in a stunning prediction, says he will not be today. Holding Flutie to 21 yards would be a good day for the Winnipeg defense. Key Van Jenkins is a straight-ahead runner, but the computer says he won't be a major factor, which leaves Calgary. Calgary fullback Andy McVeigh. Will he pick up the slack? Well, not for yards, but he will manage one touchdown. So then, based on all the information available, the Bombers' ground game will be in high gear. Most of these yards gained by Michael Richardson. He will wear different clothing for the game, of course, but music to your ears, that computer analysis, I suppose. It could be. Um, you didn't tell me what the computer said for the outcome of the game. Um, if the computer's right, hopefully uh, the outcome will be fine too. You've been in, very generous, Michael, in your praise of the offensive line this year, led by Walby and Correll. They've opened up a lot of holes for you. If they can't do it today, I suppose that computer prediction will be negated. Agree? Yes, I agree, but I don't think it'll be that way. Uh, for six straight weeks, we've uh, opened up the holes, and um, I mean, they've been doing a great job for the last six weeks. Um, it's the holes are big enough for me to run through, and sometimes they just give me enough time just to get through the crease. And today, hopefully, the things will go the same way. And more than likely, it will with those guys blocking in front of me. Michael, thanks for your time. Best of luck today. Thanks a lot. All right, Brian, the computer says he's in for a big day. Now it's up to Michael Richardson to play the game. All right, Scott, Doug Flutie warms up. Uh, he is convinced that he is in for a big day in our live coverage of Grey Cup 92. There's a look at Doug Flutie. We'll continue on CBC right after this. Canada's new gun control law includes an amnesty in November. This means you can turn in illegal, neglected, or unwanted firearms to the police legally. Too often neglected and forgotten guns can lead to mishaps. Believe me, I know. It almost happened to us. Don't let it happen to you. Let's get these firearms out of circulation. Why risk a tragedy? Call your local police for information. They're there to help. Hello, I'm Gus Revenberg, here to tell you of our one price selling policy. At Gus Revenberg Pontiac Buick GMC, we believe our customers shouldn't have to hassle and haggle to receive our lowest price. Every car, truck, and van carries our discounted price 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. You don't have to rely on your negotiating skills to receive your best price. The one price selling policy at Gus Revenberg's. It's just about 5.15, getting dark on a Sunday afternoon here in southern Ontario. But as we said earlier, conditions absolutely perfect here inside the Sky Dome. Appropriate that we see the Canadian flag. There's no question. The Canadian Football League has to do something. The status quo is not good enough. The big question is, is that something possible expansion into the United States? The business side says, look at the numbers. We can't keep losing money. We have to expand. Many great Canadian players, including the best of them all, say expansion to the United States is simply not the answer. What we have to do is to make sure that as we advance ourselves, that we provide Canadians with an opportunity to play football. But the bottom line is, is that we have to be more competitive there's a characteristic around this league, an aura about this league that makes it special for a lot of people. If you take that away, I really feel that uh, the popularity of the sport here in Canada will diminish greatly. 
I think, the superior athlete coming out of Canadian colleges, and it'll be the, the really superior athlete that will have a fighting chance of making a CFL. The CFL is a business, and it's in, it's in business to make a profit. It's their right, I guess, to do whatever they wish unless we're going to claim it as a national heritage. We haven't treated it that way. It was here at Rosedale Park in Toronto in 1909 that the very first Grey Cup game was played. Huey Gall scored a touchdown and kicked eight singles as the University of Toronto beat Toronto Parkdale 26-6. Indeed, Canadian football has a rich history. And those who wanted to have a future believe the only way that can happen is if the CFL expands its borders into the U.S. But the Canadian player who's been there from day one is concerned he won't be a part of that. Canadian content in the CFL has been protected with quotas since 1936 when only five Americans were allowed on each team. In 1961, the number of imports per team had nearly doubled to 12. In 1990, the restrictions were loosened again. Now there are 17 imports and 20 Canadians. Despite the gradual erosion of their place in the CFL, Canadians continued to play starring roles. Witness Tony Gabriel's Grey Cup winning catch in 1976. But U.S. expansion could mean the end to quotas. What then for Canadians? I probably could replace uh, uh, 16 of my football players with uh, American players. You know, obviously we don't want to uh, eliminate the Canadian content. I think we have to look at that. And uh, you have to allow uh, players to compete. So, you know, to, to allow uh, that to be a stumbling block, I think, would only damage the league. When Canadian Jock Clammy got by American junior Thurman this season for a touchdown, Wally Buono criticized his USC-trained defensive back, saying he shouldn't have been beaten by a player from Queens. I truly hope he doesn't believe what he said. I hope he truly doesn't think it possible that a Canadian wide receiver in this league is able to succeed against an American defensive back. One of Buono's most reliable receivers this season has been Western product Dave Sapungis. Still, many Canadians say they're considered inferior by their American coaches. In most cases, what you have to do, you have to sit and look at the kid and say, hey, give him a year or give him two years or give him three years, let him serve as an apprenticeship, and he's going to be a football player. Given time to develop, Canadian trained players have proved their worth. Number 75, Gordon Judges, helped the Montreal Alouettes to three Grey Cups in the 70s as a defensive lineman. He now follows the game through his camera, and he's angered by the bias against Canadians. The biggest, the fastest, the strongest, the smartest, and the toughest, the, yeah, I can go on and on and on. They survive, okay? And, and, and there's kids out there in every neighborhood who can do that. But if they, don't get the, if they don't get the chance, they're being robbed. We've had coaches up here who have looked at the motion. We had a guy named Larry Quintero up here last year, and he watched the uh, defensive film. And he saw all these uh, running backs moving around. He goes, hey, they can't do that. I'm thinking to myself, my God, this guy's coaching our linebackers, and he doesn't even know we can move our backfield around? Whoo, we're in for a long year. I need this to say it was. But team owners are losing millions of dollars trying to sell a Canadian institution to a Canadian public that has not supported it. They haven't got many other options than to turn to the U.S. A change in, in, in all human beings, change brings, brings fear. And we're all, we're all, we are all fearful. Um, but I think that, uh, that we have to be re realistic about this and say that there's four new owners because there was four bankrupt teams. I think you have to at least consider the United States. I think you have to do it in such a way that um, you assure yourself that uh, it is probably an experiment to go south of the United States. Uh, let's try a couple of American cities, see how we do. Still, there are those who remember the glory days when Russ Jackson was king. He has joined the chorus of those who worry about risking eight decades of history on a hastily laid plan. I believe in the Canadian Football League. I think it's important. I want it to survive and I want it to continue. And I guess I have not been told by anybody why this is good. All right, it's a good question. Here's the man to answer it. Commissioner Larry Smith, talk to Russ Jackson. Well, first of all, I'd like to say to Russ and any other veterans listening that uh, they should take my place and look at what the inside of this league is all about. 
We have a great product. We have a great game. We have not managed our affairs properly. The plan is to cut our costs, to become a low-cost producer. We can exist as an eight-team configuration. The problem I have is that the market in Canada is contracting. The opportunities for sponsorship are contracting. I can use the brewery industry as a simple example to illustrate that point. There'll be one brewery here in the next few years, and who do you think is gonna pay for that money? We have bigger opportunities if we're able to expand into other markets from a business perspective. Can this league survive without expanding into the United States? Is it dead in a year or two if it doesn't? Brian, we can expand. We are going to cut our costs. We started this year. We will reduce our costs further in the next year. No, but year. can you survive without on. expanding? The purpose of expanding or reducing your cost is to lower your cost base to, so you can exist. We can exist as an A-team configuration. But as I said from the be beginning, do you want to exist in a state where you're always going to be chasing your tail? Let me ask you this. How do you sell a game? You can't sell the game out here in southern Ontario. You can't sell the game to Canadians. How do you sell it to Americans when you can't sell it here? Well, I disagree with the fact that we can't sell it to Canadians. We're having difficulty selling out today because we don't have a truly eastern team. If Hamilton or Ottawa or Toronto were in this game, it would be sold out. Secondly, our ratings in the eastern semi or western semifinal and western final were far superior to last year. In the western final, we drew 1.8 million people on a 15-minute basis, which is up 400 100,000 from last year. We sell our product here, but at the same time, we're always subject to variables beyond our control. Do you agree with Stephen Brunt in the Globe and Mail who says to those that are against expansion, give me plan B, look at the map, there's no other alternative? Well, the, the, the difficulty that Canadians face is that we have a real tradition here. But I would ask some of these people that have come out of the closet and complained about our expansion, what have you done lately? Have you gone to a football game? Have you supported Canadian University football? I mean, there's a lot of people complaining that have not put anything into our game. For those who have, I respect that opinion, but I think we have an exciting opportunity that we should try. We have to be different. We have to try and exp expand and export an outstanding, unique Canadian game. You say the rules are sacrosanct. What happens a couple of years down the road when some rich American says, uh-uh, we're going to change the rules and we don't care what you're saying? Brian, that, that's a crock, and, and I had it happen today. I had the owners, potential owners from Sacramento, San Antonio, uh, also from St. Petersburg, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Montreal, came in and said, gentlemen, let us make one thing perfectly clear. What we want is your game, the Canadian game. We, we, want, we want to be part of you because you have a unique game, and we know that if we try to copy the American game in the States, we'll get killed. Is this the last Canadian Grey Cup? I do not think this is the last Canadian Grey Cup because when hockey expanded, if we asked ourselves the same question, it was not the last Canadian Hockey Stanley Cup. It will not be the last Canadian Grey Cup. All right, we've talked about expansion into the United States. Just a couple of seconds. It's getting noisy. What about the Montreal situation? I keep hearing there's not enough money there, and it's a dead issue. It's not a dead issue, Brian. Basically, Roger Dory is having trouble linking up with a, a big investor to back him up. Uh, if Roger is unable to come up with that investor, we will find other investors, and hopefully, if it's not with Roger, it will be with other people. He knew going in that the key was they had to have the private investment base in Montreal. Okay, just a couple of seconds. This time next year, I know you've got a deadline of December 31st. Are we going to see a 10, 12, 18 league? I would like to think that there's a very good opportunity we'll see at least a 10-team league. All right, Larry Smith, thank you. Whether you agree with expansion or not, it is nice to see a commissioner with a vision. Stay with us. We are live from Sky Dome in Toronto. Dave Sapungis of the Calgary Stampeders. Countdown to the 1992 Grey Cup will continue after this. The beauty of Christmas is so many things. A tree trimmed with love good friends and good food gifts given from the heart shoppers drug mart features sensational fragrances including oscar de la renta and opium ombre rose and alfred son all exceptionally priced we wish you all a beautiful christmas leon's edition take four ho 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 next it's Leon's Ho, Ho, Hold the Payment. Ho, 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 Next. Get the furniture you need for the holidays with no interest and no payment till June. Ho, Ho, Ho. Yes. No. Leon's Ho, Ho, Hold the Payment. No matter how you say it. Yo, yo, yo. It's just a better way to buy furniture. Ho, Ho, Ho. 
Ho, ho, ho. Thanks a lot. Ho, ho. We'll, we'll be in touch. Ho, ho, ho. Really? Ah. McCauley, let's stay in touch. McCauley. 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 You call, OK? I'll call, Mom. and find out how you can save. Just about one hour to kick off, and the starting quarterbacks are working out on the field here at Skydome. They say Doug Flutie has that quick release, so you better not rush him. He'll hit the deep backs one-on-one. -on -one. They say Matt Dunnigan has to use the play action to set up the running game. However you describe them, they are described by those that know them best as quite simply being winners. There's that will that puts them over the top, that uh, allows them to put everything behind them and think only of winning. The Hail Mary, the pass that made Doug Flutie a part of football folklore. Caught by Boston College! I don't believe it! It's a touchdown! He's always enjoyed any kind of a competitive game, challenge, sport, anything where you can compete against someone else and win. Matt Dunnigan began his CFL career in Edmonton. It was the first of four teams he's taken to the Grey Cup. No other quarterback has done that. And I think he's probably the only quarterback in the CFL, in my opinion, that can give Doug Flutie a run for his money and maybe surpass Doug Flutie on one given day. They said Doug Flutie was too small to play in the NFL, but in the few chances he got to play, he dispelled that myth. He's got leadership and charisma. He's a great competitor. He's an unselfish player. He uh, inspires a football team, and he has a great knack for, I think, uh, knowing how to win games. Matt Dunnigan plays quarterback with a linebacker's mentality, sacrificing his body for every last yard. He is the same at the beginning of the first quarter as he is at the end of the fourth quarter. He's... Uh, He's always very, very highly, highly focused on what it is that he has to do. And let's face it, in this league, uh, your quarterback is, is the guy who makes your breaks you. Last year, Doug Flutie made the BC Lions, more than 6,000 yards passing. They thought they could do without him when he wanted more money. They were wrong. He's a great athlete. He's probably the best quarterback the CFL has ever had. I'm tickled pink for him, okay? I know he's playing for the other team now, and it breaks my heart, but still, I'm thrilled for Doug. Matt Dunnigan has been plagued by injuries, the glass quarterback. But in last year's Grey Cup, he refused to let a separated shoulder get in his way as he led the Argos to victory. And Dunnigan tried to stay in... Because, you know, he's really too short, and, and he really doesn't have uh, all the kind of the things that maybe you would want in a quarterback, except one thing, he's got a huge heart. And he's always been a competitor, and he's always been a team guy. When the Calgary game plan breaks down, Doug Flutie is often at his best. No one improvises like he does. Having the faith in him, you want to do as well as you possibly can with your assignment because you know he's going to do as well as he can with his. And that's uh, the type of respect I'm talking about that everybody has for him. One of Matt Dunnigan's greatest assets is his presence in the huddle. He is a born leader who commands respect. He's, he's definitely... Uh, very aggressive he knows what he wants to do and I don't think there's a, a doubt in his mind at any time that he wants to go score and he's going to score and uh, I think he sheds that kind of confidence throughout the whole offense. Doug Flutie has won many awards set many records but one prize still eludes him. He has dreamed of the Grey Cup for a few years now and I just want Doug to have what he really wants and this is what he wants. Doug Flutie with me now. Doug, your mother is obviously very clear on the stakes. You have said that you came to Canada to have positive memories in professional football. Here you are on the verge of the biggest pro football memory this country has to offer. Need I ask you how much you've thought about that in the past couple of days? Well, basically, you know that it's been such a great year and things have gone just so well that you don't get these opportunities too often. 
and you want to take advantage of it and that's the key for us is and that's what's been in my mind is that we're this close it's that big of a game that you want to take advantage of it and when you walk off the field feel good about your performance Doug you're here with the team of destiny the Stampeders have focused on the Grey Cup all season long losing will not do does that create some anxiety um, not really because you you want that for yourself more than anything I mean obviously I think I put more pressure on myself to win than any outside force could possibly. But uh, you want to do it for the city of Calgary. Everybody was so close last year, This uh, the guys from the team from last year, and uh, they could taste it, and we're this close again, and we have to take advantage of it. Doug, thanks for your time. Thank you. So then, Doug Flutie, all set for the 80th Grey Cup. Doug Flutie, the third Stampeder to be MVP. The others, Lavelle Coleman in 64, Willie Burden in 75. Matt Duddigan is class. He hasn't rubbed it in on the Argonauts, but you know he loves to be back here at Sky Dome. Scott Oak spoke with the Winnipeg quarterback, Matt Dunnigan. Now here is the second half of the pair of players who gets top billing in this 80th Grey Cup. Uh, Matt Dunnigan seems all you ever do is get to the Grey Cup game. Do you think, as was the case last year, you've been presented with an opportunity to overcome what was a frustrating regular season today? Well, I don't look at it as that. I just look as a challenge. Uh, total team effort to get to this point. Uh, Nobody remembers the people that uh, walk away from this game losers and uh, I've been involved in uh, situations like that in the Grey Cup and it's not a pretty feeling. We've set a long-term goal for ourselves. We're at the uh, point now where we can accomplish that and that's all I'm looking forward to doing. Matt, thanks for your time. Good luck. Thanks a lot. So then Matt Dunnigan, Doug Flutie, both confident, but then as professional athletes, they have to be. They both think they're in for big days. But confidence is something the computer cannot factor. And so based on uh, hard, cold information alone, let's have a look at what the computer thinks about the passing game. Remember, the computer's already said Doug Flutie will have a tough day on the ground, so can he do it through the air? Well, this isn't a bad day's work, but these are not typical Flutie numbers, 253 yards. Alan Pitts is the league's top receiver. Computer says he'll produce today almost 100 yards and a touchdown. Now, the passing attack won't be quite as strong for Winnipeg, but uh, like Flutie, Matt Dunnigan, who likes to go deep, will throw one touchdown pass and one interception. Larry Thompson is the Bombers' top receiver, but the computer says Thompson will not be on the receiving end of that touchdown toss. Dunnigan, though, will get the ball to him six times. And usually in a throw-in league like the CFL, the team that uh, gains the most yards per pass wins. Computer gives the edge to the Bombers by about a yard and a half. Again, though, we say the computer can factor neither emotion nor pressure, and I'm with two guys who know a lot about both. Uh, Kent Austin, Saskatchewan Rough Riders quarterback, Ron Lancaster, Edmonton Eskimos head coach, are our game day analysts. Ron, let's begin with you. Uh, Doug Flutie did it to you last week in the West Final. Is it hard to imagine him not having a big day? No, I, I, I can't visualize Doug Flutie not playing football the way Doug Flutie wants to play. I, I mean, I just watched Doug Flutie enough the last couple of years to know that when the football game starts, he's like a kid playing a game that he loves on the streets. And uh, I think when you have that attitude, I think you, you really look forward to playing well every game. Kent, you've had prime seating at times to watch Doug Flutie weave his magic as you've stood on the sidelines. Urban Bowman was saying to us yesterday, the only way to uh, defense Doug Flutie is just hope he has a bad day. Is that the extent of it? Doug Flutie is not going to have a bad day. Uh, I think those yards that, that the computer shows are, are too low for Doug today. I think the only way you can defend Doug is to tackle his receivers and to wall him at the line of scrimmage and hope that the front gets pressure on him. Ron, we have to talk about Matt Dunnigan. Uh, sure. He never does anything except get to the Grey Cup. Is he a primetime player in your estimation? Oh, he sure is. I think uh, what Adam Rita said about him is about true. He's all heart. Uh, he'll do whatever it takes to win. But Matt's the kind of guy that needs to get things going, and he needs some help. And he's got to get the running game going a little bit and get that going. Then he will get confidence. If he gets things going early, he'll be real tough. He is a competitor. Can't you notice a difference in the moods of the two players, Dunnigan and Flutie? And that seems to me be, to be a little tight before the game. And Doug was very loose and confident and seemed to have his mind on, on what he's doing. Not that Matt doesn't have his mind on his game plan, but Matt seemed to be a little bit more uptight about, about the game tonight. You were talking to Doug a moment ago. You may have been the last person with access to him aside from teammates. What did he say? He just said he's ready to play. He's glad to be here. He's been looking forward to this, and, and uh, I think he's loose enough that he's going to play very well today. Ron, can this game come down to a field goal? Will it be that close? Oh, it can come down to a field goal. Every football game does. I know uh, Kent here remembers a field goal game a few weeks ago. So you say when, when Flutie got us, you know, we got these guys. <laughs> so, hey, that's what football's all about. I really believe, Scott, and people will think I'm crazy for saying this, but 
I think as a coach and a player if you can have the football in your hands at the end of the game with the chance to kick the field goal to win the game that's all you really ask because there's no guarantees. OK we've got this game covered eight ways to Sunday by a computer and two guys to know a bit about it Brian. All right Scott you're talking with a couple of quarterbacks it's appropriate we have the two gentlemen here that ensured that Vancouver and Toronto would not be in the playoffs by being smart enough to sign two great quarterbacks Dunnigan and Flutie Cal Murphy you're not known as a spendthrift what prompted you to take Dunnigan from Toronto. Well I uh, felt that uh, if people were going to get into this free agent business we were going to get in it too and uh, as I said at the time of uh, we wouldn't be first we wouldn't be last. Well, we would be fast and uh, we'd go big and that's basically how we got in it. You went big Larry Rickman you went even bigger. Has it paid out. I know you're in the Grey Cup but a million dollars a year hasn't been worth it. Absolutely. Uh, when I, I bought the team I uh, made a commitment to my city that we wouldn't be second and uh, and you only do that with the best possible players and Doug is the Gretzky of the CFL and candidly you just have to do what you have to do to win. All right, talking about commitments to cities, the Grey Cup last year, Cal, was in Winnipeg. It was a tremendous week, tremendous game, well attended. What do you think about talk of moving it to Calgary next year? Because it's been less than exciting, let's be honest, here in Toronto this week. In fact, it's been downright boring at times. Well, I think when you go into a big city, uh, it isn't any different than the Super Bowl going into Los Angeles or anything like that. It's uh, just another event. And but I, the Super Bowl sells out in L.A. Kelly. Yes, but you have a real corporate uh, structure in there as well. And uh, I think that that might be a hard sell in Toronto at this point in time. Uh, Toronto, uh, I, you know, I, I really think, though, that the Grey Cup should be moved around from city to city. I've said that for some time. I don't think it should be moved back and forth between the Dome Stadiums and Vancouver and Toronto. I think they should get it on a basis the same as the other uh, cities get. All right, Wayne Gretzky's here. We'll hear from him in just a minute. Larry Rickman, how close are you to moving the game from Toronto to Calgary next year? You know, we're in constant negotiations. I think it's going to be a week or two until it's uh, it's finalized, but I'm going to do everything that I possibly can. I think we do a heck of a job, and it'd be great to give uh, Toronto a breather and, and uh, give it give it back to them in uh, 1995. All right. I was told not to get Murphy excited this afternoon, but I've got to ask him about expansion. I'll give each of you a shot. Cal Murphy, why are you so bitterly opposed? And, and you only got a few seconds here. Well, how many seconds? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there are uh, things that have to be answered. There are business things that have to like be what? answered. Well, for instance, uh, I think uh, the travel, uh, for instance, is another one. I think uh, workman's compensation is another thing. I think uh, how are you going to pay the players? I know you're going to pay them American money, but uh, with a dollar bouncing around, those types of things. And then uh, I think you've got to look at the Canadian uh, part of it as well. I, I'm talking about the rules. How much are the rules going to change with the various parts? There are too many things that have not been answered, and uh, let's see what happens. Uh, the other thing is I believe that a team that comes in should pay a, a down payment of $3 million into the league. They should also put a note in there of $2 million that they will operate. And otherwise, I think that uh, you're playing, rolling the dice. Larry Rickman, why is expansion a good thing? <laughs> I don't think there's any, any uh, downside to it. We've been given a, a window of opportunity with the uh, demise of the WLAF. The owners of those, those clubs were, were uh, here, here in town. We met met with them. Uh, there's only positive things to uh, uh, to come from it. But the Canadian ratio is definitely a big issue. Cal's right. There there are things that have to be uh, worked on, but it's like any other business. Times are times are changing. Free trade is in order. And um, we we really believe Calgary believes that uh, now is the time to expand. I got to go, Larry. Can it be done in four weeks? Is there enough time to wrap up the issue of the Canadian players and what's going to be done? I don't think so. I think it's going to take longer. So you don't think there'll be expansion before next year? Oh, definitely. I, I definitely think those, that there will be expansion, but I don't think all of the issues will be will be fully addressed within a four-week period. All right, got to go, Cal. You had the last word before. Uh, more than a few seconds, he wants to talk some more. Cal Murphy and Larry Rickman, stay with us. There's Winnipeg Arena. They had Toronto fans here during the World Series. Look at this big crowd, Cal, and Winnipeg Arena to watch your football team. Larry and Cal, thank you. Wayne Gretzky up next. 
It's the festive season, and once again, Swiss Chalet is bringing you a special tradition, our festive special for only $6.45. Along with a plump quarter chicken, golden fries or baked potato and chalet sauce, you'll also receive cranberry sauce, tasty stuffing, and a festive treat, a 100-gram Toblerone Swiss chocolate bar, all for $6.45 while supplies last. It's our way of wrapping up our thanks to you. The festive special, only $6.45. Leon's Editions, take six. Ho, ho, ho. Thank you. It's Leon's Ho, Ho, Hold the Payment. Ho, 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 Next. ho, ho. Get the furniture you need for the holidays with no interest and no payment till June. Ho, 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 right. Leon's Ho, Ho, Hold the Payment. No matter how you say it, it's just a better way to buy furniture. Is this for the beer commercial? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. Look at Toronto on this Saturday evening, uh, 45 minutes to kick off between the Calgary Stampeders and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I promise that Wayne Gretzky will join me in just a minute. No, that's not Wayne. Uh, he's here actually without the goatee as well and no paint on the face. Now, there's been a lot of talk this week about the lack of excitement surrounding the Grey Cup here in Toronto. I think the Argonauts have done a pretty good job. One good idea has been fan bowl and with more, here is Elfie Schlegel. I'm here at Fan Bowl where anyone can come and test their skills and be a CFL star. One of the important things about football is receiving, and this is how you do it. Yes! Tons of things to do here at Fan Bowl. It's a lot of fun. Look at this arcade here. Huh? Dan Ferrone playing quarterback right. When it comes to the third down, it's all up to the kicker. Yes! Three points. Hey, I knew Brian Williams was big. I didn't think he was that big. That's a big screen, isn't it? Accuracy, precision, hitting your target. Quarterbacking's the key. Nothing. They say the Rockets the fastest man in football. Rocket fuel. Elfie, can I please get your autograph? I'll tell you what, Elfie, if you can rap like the Rocket did Thursday night at the awards ceremony, we'll call you Vanilla Elf, and I will be truly impressed. Wayne Gretzky joins me. They've said the Rocket dropped the ball. He hung on to that microphone on Thursday night. Let me ask you something. It has to be frustrating. I think Brian Cooper has set up some pretty good things, the fan bowl. The people just don't seem to care. There hasn't been any excitement. What do you see as the problem? Well, I think the people care. I think that uh, you have to understand we came off a... Uh, World Series situation in Toronto. The World Series obviously is something that's pretty big and something that's pretty popular. And uh, you know, to host the Great Cup right after that is something pretty tough to follow. And as you said, the Argonaut organization, especially Brian, have worked very hard. And I think we're seeing the results right now. People just haven't bought into this so far. Wayne, you grew up in southern Ontario. You know what this game meant. I can remember games when I was in Hamilton. Do the people care anymore in southern Ontario? Well, I think so many things have changed, and I, I think the problem that we have now in, in, uh, in the CFL, as we're talking about expansion, is that we have two different situations. One, mostly in the West, with community-owned teams in Winnipeg and Edmonton, and, you know, they like to do, you know, and have the things in the situation that, that where they pay a dollar a year rent. Toronto's a little bit different. We're paying over a million dollars a year rent. Um, 
we need to make the product work, we have to make it sell, and if we don't, we're still going to suffer. So we're, the toughest part of the CFL is we have two different type of owners, and that's making it difficult. What about the fact you have a cosmopolitan population, people that didn't grow up with football in their native countries, and also you lost a generation of fans with that dumb blackout rule in television? Right. Well, I think that, uh, as I said, to me, as growing up in this area, as, as a fan of the sport, as a fan of sports in general, I think that people like the CFL, I think people enjoy the CFL, but the most important city in my mind to the CFL is Toronto and Southern Ontario, Southern Ontario, and the people in this area are saying, we're not sure if we want CFL, and that's where the problems are, and I think that's the difficulty right now. You're a leader. You know the importance of a marquee player. Matt Dunnigan was a marquee player. Does it annoy you now, the fact that he was allowed to get away? No, not at all. You know, professional sports I've learned from the other side is uh, sometimes difficult. It was an extremely difficult decision. It was a business decision. We won a championship last year, and we didn't make money. We lost money. Uh, Matt Dunnigan is a tremendous player, one of the premier players of the game, and he sells the game, and he works hard. Toronto Argonauts, quite frankly, couldn't afford to pay a guy that kind of money. We, we were in enough trouble as, as things were. It was a business decision. Matt went on to Winnipeg, and he's helped the CFL, and I, I wish him the best of luck. Bottom line, Brian, was it was a business, business decision, and Toronto Argonauts had trouble meeting those demands. Stephen Brandt, I quoted him earlier, says, look at the math. There's a bottom line. You got into this as a businessman, big money. Did you get into this with a view to eventual expansion to the United States? No, I don't think so. I think we got into this investment thinking that Toronto Argonauts were the best team to buy in the CFL. It's a tremendous sports city, a tremendous upside. We really were excited about owning this franchise. And I don't mean, I don't mean to say this as a threat or anything as such, but I believe that if, if John and Mr. McNall and myself uh, we've put everything we can into this. We spent over half a million dollars this year in marketing. If we can't make this franchise fly, I don't like the chances of somebody else making this franchise fly. And I don't think there will be a CFL without Toronto. And I think people have to look at that as a serious situation. Are you saying you're not prepared to lose $10 million more and uh, therefore there has to well, be expansion? It's kind of funny. You know, you hear people say, you know, it's a Canadian thing, it's a Canadian sport, but I don't see those people putting the money into it. We're putting the dollars into it. And believe me, the pocket, uh, they're, you know, it's not endless. There has to be a bottom line. And yeah, I guess I am saying that. There has to, something has to happen. You know, it's easy for people to say it's a Canadian sport. Let's run to the government and get the government to donate money. We couldn't, we could hardly get any money to help support the Grey Cup. I don't know where the money's going to come from. And we don't want to go to the government to get money. But it's a serious situation right now. We have to go. One final question. You're sitting well. How's the back? I feel a lot better. I, I hope that, uh, as I said, by, by the end of hockey season, March sometime, that I'm skating. And, you know, as I said, we have a tremendous team, a tremendous coach, and I'm really excited. I hope I can get back and play. All right. Good luck, Wayne. All we right. hope to see you back in the NHL. The Kings had a rough time here in Toronto last night against the Maple Leafs. Uh, the fans are ready, and a uh, big crowd already here in Sky Dome. About 46 minutes to kick off. Countdown to Grey Cup 92. Exclusive coverage on CBC will continue right after this. Wayne, thank you. If you're thinking of buying a six-passenger family sedan, here's a number that should interest you. It's Chrysler's bottom line on Dodge Spirit and Plymouth Acclaim. Add no-charge air conditioning. That's a $1,000 value, plus a $2,000 factory rebate for a total value of $3,000. $3,000 on select remaining 1992 Dodge Spirits and Plymouth Acclaims, now priced at Chrysler's bottom line. Advantage, Chrysler. of energy now. Ho! Ho, ho, ho! You got another one? Ho! Get the furniture you need for the holidays with no interest and no payment till June. You're at the North Pole. It's snowing. It's Christmas and... Ho, ho, ho! Leon's Ho, Ho, Hold the Payment. No matter how you say it, it's just a better way to buy furniture. You're fat. You're jolly and... Ho, ho, ho! Great. 
as we come back live. Countdown to the 1992 Grey Cup continuing here on CBC Television. Well, we're going to go down to the field right now. Mark Lee is standing by. Even in the age of temperature-controlled Grey Cups, there we are. We lost the camera for a minute. The kickers play an important role. The kickers, above all else, stand to be either goat or hero. There is no in-between. To talk about kickers in the Canadian Football League, here is Mark Lee. David Ridgway. It's up. It's good. When Dave Ridgway kicked that winning field goal in the 1989 Grey Cup right here on the 35-yard line, he experienced the glory of being a kicker. Two weeks ago, when he missed a field goal on the last play of the West semifinal, he knew the grief. Now, if today's Grey Cup game plays according to form, these goalposts could once again be the boundaries of success or failure. In the past 20 years, kickers have had a profound impact on the Grey Cup. They've scored nearly half of all the points. But the spotlight on the kicker is tempered by the dreaded missed field goal. On a bitterly cold day in Calgary at the 1975 Grey Cup, Montreal's Don Sweet was in a kicking duel with Edmonton's Dave Cutler. It was 9-7 Eskimos with seconds to play. Sweet faced the uprights and missed what seemed like a sure game-winning kick. Don Sweet would live with that failure for two years before getting a chance to redeem himself in the 1977 Grey Cup. Despite the glaring results of their roles, kickers relished the high stakes. I dreamed that we would not score, that we'd be on the 10-yard line, we would not take the ball in, and I had the chance to win. Now, when it was all over and done and we scored, I went, great, I didn't have to kick the field goal, but I had to build myself that way, yes. So when I came on the field, this is what I wanted. This is what I've been, you know, been uh, trained to do, and mentally I'm, I'm prepared for it. Dave Cutler is the all-time leading scorer in the Grey Cup. He has six Grey Cup rings. He was the dean of all CFL kickers. There were six seconds left in the 1981 Grey Cup when the Eskimos summoned him from the sidelines to win that game. He did, and never doubted it. With our team, it was uh, pressure was probably the most selfish emotion you could have because uh, pressure means that you're afraid of failing. It's a whole deal. I mean, I'm sitting here with goosebumps right now. I mean, even just thinking about it because when you get in that game, you can't you can't do anything but absolutely your maximum. And you know, sometimes it's not what you want it to be, but you have to be at the top of both your psychological and physical game. A great kicker needs more than a strong leg. He needs unshakable confidence. Newcomer Troy Westwood is one who thrives on the chance to split the uprights. Troy and I have an understanding that as soon as he says yes one way, uh, I can understand what he, why he's saying yes, because he's excited about it. And if he says yes another way, uh, I know that, that he can positively put it in there from there. Confidence and trying to maintain an even level of it at, at all times is something you have to kind of practice throughout the college years and any time before then, and, and you had better learn it very quickly at this level that you're not going to last. This season, Mark McLaughlin of the Stampeders was the CFL's leading scorer. He is a picture of consistency, but he is burdened by the pressure to be perfect. You know, when I kick winning field goals, I don't feel like I won, but if I miss a winning field goal, I feel like I've lost. As a place kicker, you have to understand your role. You have to understand why you're on this team. And you also have to have confidence in yourself and in your own ability and hope that your teammates also have confidence in you. The great mental discipline allows one kicker to stand above other kickers. And we've had some many tremendous examples of that in the CFL because I think what makes those kickers stick, uh, stand out above the crowd is the, is the mental ability to handle adversity as well as when they're on top of their game. Dave Ridgway got the glory in 1989, but he knows how easy it is to be the GOAT. That is the circumstance of being a kicker. But the computer knows no pressure, and apparently it doesn't think Winnipeg's Troy Westwood does either. The computer thinks Westwood will go four for four in this Grey Cup game. Bombers have the CFL's most reliable punter and 13-year veteran Bob Cameron. He'll punt twice a quarter on average and at a distance six yards better than his season average. Computer also has faith in Calgary's Mark McLaughlin. He will go four for four. 
And so the computer says, and Calgary's Tony Martino will punt about the same time, number of times as uh, Bob Cameron. He'll get respectable distance. The Bombers have done nothing on punt returns all season long. Computer doesn't expect them to do any more today. The Stampeders with Pee Wee Smith will be better. Doesn't look like the computer expects either team to break a return for a touchdown, and Calgary gets the edge in kickoff returns. So back now to the human element with Stampeders head coach Wally Buono. Uh, I won't ask this. I'll suggest it because I know the answer. If it comes down to a late kick, the game on the line, you're confident that uh, with Mark McLaughlin attempting it for you, you can win it. We are. Mark's won uh, a lot of big games for us. He did one uh, this year and last year in the Western Final. Uh, he kicked a 54-yard field goal that uh, gave us a chance to win. So we feel very confident in Mark's ability. Well, he watched the mood about uh, oh, 35 minutes before kickoff on this team of destiny, the team that expected all season long to be in this Grey Cup championship game. I think like one person says, uh, one year of work for 60 minutes, uh, what's, what's ahead of us? How much did you use the Grey Cup appearance as motivation during the season? Again, it's been a motivation all year, and our players are ready to play. If Doug Flutie uh, has a big day, you can win. Agreed? Uh, Doug Flutie does what Doug Flutie does. Uh, we just want him to do his part. we got a good football team. Uh, we will give him the support he needs. Wally, thanks for your time. Best of luck in this game. Thank you. Brian, back to you. All right, Scott, talking about kicking, the last time the Grey Cup was in this building, Dave Ridgway kicked the Saskatchewan Rough Riders over the Hamilton Ticats. We'll return to Skydome right after this. The beauty of Christmas is so many things. A tree trimmed with love. Good friends and good food. Gifts given from the heart. Shoppers Drug Mart features sensational fragrances, including Oscar de la Renta and Opium, Ombre Rose, and Alfred Sun, all exceptionally priced. We wish you all a beautiful Christmas. The Windsor Laser Eye Institute. In 60 seconds or less, we're going to change the way you see the world. Imagine life without glasses or contacts. Eczema laser surgery is an investigational procedure that can reduce or eliminate your need for glasses. It's part of a continuing study and thousands of people worldwide have already enjoyed extraordinary results. Life without glasses may be just a phone call away. The Windsor Laser Eye Institute, 1-800-663-IC. Everyone's heard of the Stony Point Tavern, and for good reason. They have more than 30 salads and two soups made fresh daily in their kitchen. Roasted chicken, ribs, pork chops, Lake Erie perch, and pickerel. A seven entree land and sea platter for two, and now, Calgary-style prime rib. Stony Point Tavern has many more entrees and combos, and a large selection of tasty appetizers. $1.95 with any meal. Friendly, full-service waitresses make your dining more pleasurable. The Stony Point Tavern. in Winnipeg Arena. There they are waving. Hey, that might be a bad omen. The fans gathered at an arena or a convention center in Hamilton. And of course, the Ticats were blown out by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers as we come back live to Skydome. It'll be interesting to see, and we'll deal with it later in the day, just how many fans show up. The players, coaches, media analysis, they've all had their hand at predicting the outcome of this game. But what about the cold, hard facts and statistics assembled by the Alberta Research Council? Who is going to win? What could be the last Canadian Grey Cup, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers or the Calgary Stampeders? Once again, here is Scott Oak. After extensive analysis, this is how the computer thinks the game will unfold. No touchdowns in the first quarter. A Mark McLaughlin field goal will give the Stamps the lead. Michael Richardson will give the Bombers the lead on a second quarter touchdown run, but then Matt Dunnigan will fumble and Matt Finley will take it in for a touchdown for Calgary. Winnipeg will lead narrowly at the half. In the second half, Alan Pitts will strike with a touchdown and a short toss from Foodie. Calgary will be in front by six, heading for the final quarter. The computer thinks Andy McVeigh will extend the Stampeders' lead, and then with the Bombers trying desperately to come back, Dunnigan will throw his only touchdown pass of the day to Richardson, but that'll be it, and the Stamps will win their first Grey Cup since 1971, 33-27, the final score. And so that's it. It's over. Is there any point in playing the game? Of course there is. Urban Bowman is from Gunton, about 30 minutes north of Winnipeg, where you just got electricity, and so you're not equipped to argue with the technology of that result. I'm not equipped to argue with the technology of most results, but uh, I'm just thankful that we don't have to play the computer, too. 
we only have to play Calgary, and, and that's going to be fun. I'll forget the computer for a second. Isn't it true, Urban, that most teams relish the role of underdogs, uh, as you apparently are in this game? Well, it, it suits us fine to be underdogs because it's more fun to come from behind. The fact uh, that we're really excited about, though, is that we get to be the home team, and we haven't lost many games as a home team. The home team, even if you are thousands of kilometers away from Winnipeg. That's correct. We tried to do everything this week to simulate being at home, even down to the family day yesterday and the family picnic after, the, uh, after practice. Urban, thanks for your time. Best of luck today. Thank you. All right, Scott, you got to love Urban Bowman. He said earlier in the week, hey, there's no pressure for me. I'm in a play world. I used to have a real job. I'm here to have a good time. You know, one of the ironies is that we've talked about the problems, the fact that this great facility will not be full today. There's been less than great excitement in Toronto. It could go to Calgary next year. The irony is this has the makings of an outstanding game. You've got the great matchups in the marquee positions at quarterback. Doug Flutie with a quick release. If Winnipeg goes after Flutie, he'll just isolate his receivers one-on-one, -on -one, and he is so deadly. And, of course, Matt Duddigan loves the play action to open up the running game for Michael Richardson. There's no question. Grey Cup games are made to order to create memory.
photos and memories are a staple of Grey Cups, and the 80th should provide some. There's the view heading towards Skydome on the shores of Lake Ontario. Now we move inside. This picture being taken from the roof of the dome, providing a panoramic view. We're approaching kickoff less than half an hour away now, so the fans are taking their seats. Some of these seats will be empty today, although Calgary fans have done their best to fill them, obviously. Neither the league nor Grey Cup organizers have made a secret about empty seats, uh, but that should not be a statement on the potential for excitement in this Grey Cup game. Back with you now at Skydome as the two best teams in all the land are set to battle for the Grey Cup. And for the next three or four hours, issues like expansion, budgets, threats of teams moving do not matter in the least. Only one issue does. It's right beside me, folks. It is this, the Grey Cup and the game they'll play for it. And is this not a fitting Grey Cup matchup? Calgary versus Winnipeg, each team led by a marquee player chock full of charisma. Doug Flutie versus Matt Dunnigan, the CFL's most outstanding player versus one who's made a career of getting to this big game five times now in the past seven years. Don Whitman and Joe Galat will describe the proceedings today. Don's working his 31st Grey Cup telecast, and Don, uh, number 31 would feel a bit better if Kep is with us. Scott, you're absolutely right. We are, of course, disappointed that Dan Kepley is not in the Brad Gas booth with Joe and myself. However, we are encouraged by word from Calgary today that Dan's condition has been upgraded from critical to good. And, Joe, we look for continued improvement over the next few days. Yeah, we certainly do. And, Danny, get well soon. We want you back. Calgary and Winnipeg have never met in a Grey Cup game. During the regular season, they split the two games. Calgary winning handily at home, Winnipeg squeaking out a victory on their home turf. Does this have any bearing on what might take place today? Not really. This is, <laughs> this is the playoffs, Don. Whatever happens in regular season, that's only one game. This is for the championship, and I think it only means that either team could win if they're the best prepared. There is a bit of a difference in the two teams. I think Calgary has been on a mission ever since losing 36-21 to Toronto last year in Winnipeg. I don't think there's any question that at the end of that game, after Rocket ran that kick back, they said, hey, next year it's going to be our great cup. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers, with five games remaining in the regular season, didn't know if they were even going to be in the playoffs, never mind the Grey Cup game. They're loose and relaxed. Yeah, and and you got to really respect Urban Bowman because instead of going into the locker room ranting and raving, what he said was, hey, guys, all we have to do is win six games. We're in the Grey Cup. As a former coach, general manager, you give either side the edge. Well, I give the edge to, on a couple occasions, I'll give the edge to the Calgary Stampeders. When you've got Doug Flutie, especially with the last minute to go in the ball game, you've got a chance. Great speed at the receivers. But hey, don't forget about Winnipeg's defensive linebackers and their linemen. They can put a lot of pressure on a quarterback. The Stampeders were primarily a passing team. Winnipeg in the second half of the season had a great running game. Oh, they look like a throwback. I and mean, those They've got the huge line. I mean, they're not just big. They push people back. And with an excellent running back, the only thing they have to worry about on Calgary is that excellent secondary. The defensive backs of Calgary are very capable. So there you have it from the expert, Joe Galat, with his analysis of today's game and what might take place over the next three hours. Scott? Okay, Don, it's the Bombers' fourth Grey Cup appearance in nine years. They won in 84, 88, and 90. Calgary's in this game for the second straight year, but they have not won in 21 years, and so the Stampeders are nothing if not hungry. Toyota trucks. It doesn't get any better than this, but it does get bigger. Introducing the Toyota T100 with a bigger cab so it comfortably seats three adults and a bigger bed so it easily carries a full 4x8 payload. The Toyota T100, the biggest import truck in Canada. Now you get to choose between better and bigger and better. Toyota trucks, it just doesn't get any better than this. Come on, Rufus, find it, find it. No, 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 uh, just uh, tidying up a bit. No one can resist all four McDonald's Looney Tunes plush toys. A different one each week for $2.89 each, 50 cents of which will be donated to Ronald McDonald Children's Charities. Mm -hmm. What you want is what you get. Rufus! At McDonald's, we're so happy. Rufus, 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 Rufus. 
Isn't Christmas great? You've got to pick out a tree, drag it home, set it up, set it up, set it up, look for the lights, check the lights, trash the lights, find the decorations, hunt for the decorations. What happens to those decorations? Shoppers Drug Mart has some charming ways to deck your halls. These delightful Santa and Mrs. Claus figures are 16 inches tall, animated, and just $19.99 each. Isn't Christmas great? My words exactly. Of bricks, right? There's clay, the real McCoy, and calcite. No difference if all you're doing is cracking nuts. But when you buy a house, that's when it counts. You pay a lot for your home, and you cannot afford substitutes. You need the real McCoy. Nothing replaces the real McCoy, because out there, nature does her worst, and you have to be sure the beauty will last. You've got to have the real McCoy, only by Canada Brick. To settle for less is nuts. We're less than 20 minutes from kickoff in this 80th Grey Cup game. Officially, the Bombers are the home team today, but who will the crowd favor? Here again, our game day analysts, a couple of uh, Hall of Famers, one future and one present. Uh, Saskatchewan quarterback Kent Austin joins us along with Edmonton head coach Ron Lancaster. Kent, players are just a few minutes away from taking the field. Uh, you were in this very same position three years ago in this building. You led Saskatchewan to what many call uh, the greatest Grey Cup victory of all time. Have you any idea how these guys feel now a few minutes before coming out? Well, I can only speak about the quarterbacks, and I think that both quarterbacks are just on, concentrating on what they're going to call in the first series, and hopefully they're, they're hoping they'll complete their first pass. Ron, there is, in the minds of many people, been a disparity of moods between the two teams uh, this week. The Calgary Stampeders, all business. The Bombers went out of their way to show they were having fun. What do you make of that? Whatever it takes to get ready to play. It, it, you know, each player is in the, uh, an individual. He has to do whatever he has to do to get played. At this particular time, all you want to be is relaxed, understand your assignments, go out and have fun. It's just a game. Let's have a good one. Kent, Doug Flutie can exploit any defense in the CFL. The Bombers are hot on that side of the ball. Can they stop him today? I don't think he can contain Doug for four quarters. Uh, they really need to get pressure up front with their linebacking core. I believe that Calgary can take advantage of Winnipeg's secondary. What about Matt Dunnigan, Ron? The suggestion is he gets too intense in big games like this. Is that something for a coach, a man like yourself, to worry about if you were coaching in this game today? I'd be concerned with that. I would like him to be a little bit more relaxed. He was a little tense earlier. But uh, if he gets off to the good start, when you are that intense, you will have a big day. So, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Catch 22. Whatever you want him to do, let him do it and turn it loose. But there is enormous pressure in this game, is there not, Kent? Quickly. There's pressure, but I, I agree with Ronnie. If, if Matt starts off well, I'll have a good game. All right, we'll talk to both of you during the course of the game. Stay with us, everybody. When we come back, the players take center stage in the Grey Cup. It's hot. It's spicy. It sizzles. It's the new hot-looking, hot-blooded Ford Ranger. The 1993 Ford Ranger is the hottest thing to hit Canada since the chili pepper. Ford truck, the best never Ranger, the best-selling compact pickup in Canada. This is the Temple of Flight, shrine of the enlightened basketball mind. Come experience ball mastery. Meditate that. But master, what if we behave badly? You go to Detroit. Canada's new gun control law includes an amnesty in November. This means you can turn in illegal, neglected, or unwanted firearms to the police legally. Too often neglected and forgotten guns can lead to mishaps. Believe me, I know. 
It almost happened to us. Don't let it happen to you. Let's get these firearms out of circulation. Why risk a tragedy? Call your local police for information. They're there to help.